Welcome to worship at St. Matthew's United Methodist Church. A warm greeting to you in the sanctuary and to those joining us on Facebook. Assisted with today's service will be Pastor David Choi, Elaine Uno, our music director, special music from Diane Hernandez and Elaine Uno, our tech crew, Morgan Matthews and Jack Weatherford, Louise Green, our office manager, who makes possible all the wonderful graphics you see on the screen, and myself, Dorothy Persinger. We have a few announcements. We continue to hold an 8 o'clock informal worship service every Sunday morning in the sanctuary in addition to the 10 o'clock service, which can be seen on Facebook. As a COVID reminder, if you don't feel well, please stay home, keeping yourself and others safe. The church office will be closed Monday, September 5th for the Labor Day holiday. Pastor David is offering free music lessons to our community. You can learn how to play the keyboard, guitar, or drums. Anyone age 7 or older is welcome. Classes will be held every Thursday and Friday from 3 p.m. to 7. Classes are starting on Thursday, September 8th. Registration for these classes are still open. You can call the church office to receive more details or for an application. The Chancellor Choir and Clarion Bells begin rehearsing this coming Wednesday, August 31st. The bells will rehearse at 2, 2 p.m. and the choir rehearses at 3 p.m. If you'd like to join choir or bells, please contact Elaine Uno, our music director. St. Matthew's is still looking for two persons to help with Sunday worship. We are in need of a video audio producer as well as a sub for our audio sound technician. Contact the church office for more details. Please stand in place and greet one another. Please join me in the call to worship. We come to you, O God, to thank you for what is good. We come to you, O God, to cry out for what is wrong. We come to you, O God, to ask for help and restoration. We come to you, O God, with aching hearts and glad souls. Let us worship God. Please remain standing if you are able and join in singing hymn number 2022. In faith we sing, great is the Lord. Great is the Lord, he's holy and just, by his power we trust in his love. Great is the Lord, he's faithful and true, in his mercy he proves he is love. Please be seated. Please join me in the opening prayer. Graceful God, thank you for calling us today to your holy sanctuary and allowing us to worship you with joy and thanksgiving. Since you are in control, we commit our ways to you. 
Cleanse our hearts with the Holy Spirit and help us to worship you in truth and spirit. We want to experience your healing in our hearts, bodies, and lives. May you bless all of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please join in singing hymn number 2130 in faith we sing the summons verses 1, 3, and 5. Our first scripture reading today is from Deuteronomy, chapter 1, verses 29 to 33. I said to you, have no dread or fear of them. The Lord your God who goes before you is the one who will fight for you, just as he did for you in Egypt before your very eyes, and in the wilderness where you saw how the Lord your God carried you, just as one carries a child, all the way that you traveled until you reached this place. But in spite of this, you have no trust in the Lord your God, who goes before you on the way to seek out a place for you to camp, in fire by night and in the cloud by day, to show you the route you should take. Our second reading is from Psalm chapter 37, verse 5. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will act. May the Lord God add his blessing to this reading of his holy word. morning everyone it's always good to be here in the name of our savior jesus i grew up in south korea when i graduated from high school my father suggested that I take a driver's license test and have a driver's license. I thought my father would let me drive my older brother's car if I had a driver's license. I had high expectations. I passed the driving test, and got my driver's license. I was so excited. I thought I could drive my brother's car with my father's permission. A few days later, my father, my father bought me a used car. It was in good condition. It was a good car. 
I was very surprised. I never expected my father to buy me a car for me. Brothers and sisters, we are the children of God. God works for us in his own way. God has his own plan. God has his own will. So God works for us in his own way. In today's scripture, we see the way that God worked for the people of Israel. The people of Israel arrived at the Red Sea when they left Egypt. They were so happy and thanked God. They had expectations that everything would be all right in the future. However, at the Red Sea, they came to know that the Egyptian army was chasing after them to kill them. They were shocked and in despair. They tried to escape, but the Red Sea was blocking them. They never imagined they would face that kind of situation. They never imagined that they would find themselves in that situation. Their joy, their joy and gratitude turned into complaints and resentment. As we look at the situation that the people of Israel faced at the Red Sea, we think that what life is like. Sometimes we are so happy when things are going well, but we soon would worry when things are not going well. We find ourselves complaining about it. When the people of Israel complained to Moses, Moses told them that God would do great things for them. He told them not to worry. He told them not to worry. But Moses did not know how God would save the people of Israel at the Red Sea. He did not know the way of deliverance, the way of deliverance at the Red Sea. Maybe he was also worried in his heart. He did not know how God would save the people of Israel. During the night, God told Moses that if he stretched his staff out to the sea, God would bring great wind, a big wind to the sea and divide the waters of the Red Sea. What? Are you going to divide the waters of the Red Sea? He was very surprised. But he obeyed God. With human knowledge and with human experience, he couldn't understand it, but he obeyed God. As God said, God divided the walls of the Red Sea. And the people of Israel walked along the road in the sea and praised God. They were also surprised at the way God walked for them. Proverbs 20, 24 says, how then, can, how then can anyone know his own way? 
brothers and sisters, we don't know about our lives. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know what's going to happen this afternoon and even in an hour. You don't know what's going to happen at 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock this afternoon. So our lives are always filled with worries and anxieties. Brothers and sisters, please know that God knows everything in our lives. God is leading our lives. God is leading our steps. Proverbs 16 say, says, In his heart, a man plans his course. But the Lord determines his steps. God is leading our lives and God is leading our steps. And how can we respond to God? We need to commit everything to God. Psalm 37, Bible says, Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in Him, and He will act. Brothers and sisters, we need to commit our way to God. It means we give all our ways over to God because God knows the best for us. So we need to commit our personal problems, our family problems, our children problems, our business problems, our workplace problems, and everything else to God. I had a meeting with other UM clergy this past Thursday in Oceanside. There were four pastors in my group, including myself. We had time to pray for each other. A young Caucasian pastor wanted to share it first. I still remember his appearance. He was very tall and looking good. He has a strong beard. He's very smart. He's very brilliant. He's a pastor who is really good at ministry. It seems everyone in his church likes him. He is enjoying his ministry at the church. He looked perfect without any problem. However, when he was about to share his prayer request with us, he suddenly stopped speaking. A few seconds later, he started crying. We were surprised. A big man was crying before us like a little boy. He was crying. He was crying before us. He told us that he has a 10-year-old son who does not listen to him. He often argues with his son. He was crying when he talked about his son. His prayer request was to let him more gentle, let him be more gentle with his son. We find him having a hard time with his 10-year-old son. His church was okay. He was a great pastor. He, it seems he's doing well. But he has a problem with his young boy. Brothers and sisters, I want to say this to you. Every single person has their own 
problems. I have my own problems. You have your own problems. We all suffer from our problems. Sometimes we feel that all doors are closed before us, and there is no opportunity for us. Sometimes we ask God to open the door on our right side. Sometimes God opens that door for us. But sometimes God does not open that door for us. Instead of that, God opens the door on our left. Because God knows it is the best for us. It is still God's answer for us. So we don't need to focus on the door on our right side. Before I came to Hacienda Heights, I was in the high desert. I had been there for three years. There is a lot of sand in the desert, and I learned how to drive in the desert. When a car's wheels fall into the sand in the desert, there is a way to get out of it. The secret is in deflating a little of air of your tire. When the tire is slightly deflated, it becomes wider and gains more friction on the ground and it can escape. So are our lives. When we encounter problems or difficulties, we need to take out what's in us. We need to take out what's in us. We need to take out our knowledge, our experiences, our arrogance, and our pride. We need to commit everything to God in the belief that God knows the best for us. God brings the best solution to us. And God helps us to get out of our problems. There is a song called, God Will Make a Way. The, goals, uh, the, the words goes like this. Where God will make a way, where there seems to be no way, he walks in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide. Hold me closely to his side with love and strength. For each new day, he will make a way. He will make a way. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He walks in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my kind. Hold me closely to his side. With love and strength for each new day. He will make a way. He will make a way. Brothers and sisters, we must realize how God works for salvation. God made Jesus die on the cross. In the past, the people of Israel 
had a wrong view of the Messiah. They believed. When the Messiah came, the Messiah would surely be a king of great power who would drive out all evil people from their country and bring peace to their land. That's the salvation they thought. They believed God would save them in that way they thought. But God never saved in that way. God never saved mankind in that way. God saved mankind by crucifying Jesus. I have a question for you. Why did God kill Jesus on the cross? In the past, the cross was a frame where most cruel and evil sinners died. It was a place where most evil sins of human hung. In the eyes of God, we humans were all sinners with many sins. God wanted to crucify all our sins on the cross. For this, God used Jesus. Jesus was the Lamb of God. Jesus was the Lamb of God. He was a sacrifice. He carried all, he carried all human sins and died with them on the cross. That's the salvation. That's the way God works for our salvation. Jesus became humble himself. He became a servant and he died on the cross. It was the, it was the way God worked for our salvation. Brothers and sisters, please know that God has his own way. God has his own thought. God has his own plan. And his plan and his thought and his will are way beyond our knowledge, our experiences, and our wisdom. That's why we praise God. That's why we glorify God. That's why we worship God. God. Through the death of Jesus, we realize how God works for humans. Brothers and sisters, we don't know about our future. We cannot predict the way of life. So we must trust in God and commit our ways to God. I bless you in the name of Jesus so that your life will be filled with God's grace and blessings as you commit your way to God in your daily Christian lives. Everyone say amen.
just as he died, willing to pay the price, willing to pay the price, how beautiful love the sound Thank you, Elaine and Diane. That was truly lovely. Prayer celebrations this week include a birthday for Sharon Klein, whose birthday is on September 3rd. Prayer concerns include uh, a friend of Carol Rogers. Carol requests special and ceasing prayers for a friend, Kristen Wilkinson, and her husband, David. She is a young mother of four with a history of breast cancer and a couple of years ago, a, a couple of years ago, breast cancer, a brain scan on Friday showed a suspicious mass on the left side of her brain. The oncologist said she needs surgery right away. So she really does need our prayers. Swede Raider is receiving hospice care, continued prayers to Swede, Judith, and their family. We pray for Shirley Amy as she continues to heal from a fracture in her lower back. Prayers for all the residents living at the Palms on Mount Parada, especially since a few of them are testing positive for COVID. Prayers of thanksgiving for Josea Gonzalez, son of Dolores Gonzalez Hayes, that the growth on his liver is benign. Prayer for Jeff Graves as he heals, son of Joe and Patty Graves as he heals from a broken arm that cannot be placed in a cast. Prayers of peace and patience for Jeff, Patty, and Joe too. We continue to pray for the people of Ukraine. Pray for our country with its current challenges. Pray for people around the world who are now struggling with monkeypox and still with COVID-19. On our monthly prayer list, we have Donna Lilly, Al Sardo, Dolores Sachs, Virginia Dupre, mother of Dennis Kozak, Eileen Casterline, Don King, Lucille Householder, Naomi Mueller, Audrey Butler, Chris Kozak, son of Rich and Denise Kozak, Michael Merrigan, like a nephew to Shirley Amy, Gloria, mother of Sam Robles, and David Gilmartin, friend of the Vroomans' daughter, Cindy. Let us pray to God. God of love, we come to you this morning. We know that it is great blessing and grace for us to gather together here and worship you. Thank you for everything you have allowed us in our lives. You have allowed in our lives. Lord, we want to pray for the sick. We lift them up to you. Lord, please hear their voices. When they call you, 
be merciful to them, to them, and answer their prayers. They seek your face when they are suffering. Let them know that you still love them, that you still care for them, and that you are helping them. Let them know that you are using medical staff for them. Let them know that you are make, making them better. Help them not to lose their faith in you. But still praise you. But still praise and washing you in their pain and difficulties. God, some people need miracles in their lives. They are so afraid. They have great fear. God, you know every single part of their lives. God, comfort them. Encourage them. And give them strength to overcome their pain and their problems. We want to pray for our family, our children, and our grandchildren. There is so much evil out there in the world. Illegal drug use, violence, and shooting, and shooting take place everywhere. Many people are killed by shooting. Let your strong hand be with your children who often do not know where to go, where to stay, or where to turn. Show them path they can follow. We want to pray for the Ukrainians, kick out all evil people there, and bring justice and peace there. Please restore everything they have lost. Let them know that you always watch over them. Let them sense that they are watched over by more, than, by more than they are able to see. Protect them on your way and let, let your light shine on the land. There are still COVID-19, monkeypox, and many different viruses that we don't know about. They are around us. We are so scared by them. God, protect us from all those things. Let us be guided by you and your Holy Spirit during this week. Let us live a victorious life, mentally, spiritually, and socially. We pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus. Amen. Please uh, join me in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please join in singing hymn number 397 in the hymnal, I Need Thee Every Hour, verses 1, 3, and 5.
loving God, we present now what we have brought to you with our offerings and tithes, things that are both visible and invisible. The coins and paper we give to you today represent our work and express in a clear and visible way our love and thanks to you. Receive all that we have brought in love, O oh God. Please join me in the offering prayer. God of love and blessings, thank you for protecting our lives in your grace and taking care of us throughout the week. You have always been with us and guided us to the right path. We believe that your grace and hands are behind everything in our lives. You have provided the daily subsistence. Lord, we commit our ways to you. With a thankful heart, we offer up part of what we receive from you in these offerings. Bless these offerings and use them for your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand if you are able and join in singing number, number 593 in the hymnal, Here I Am, Lord. May the Lord keep you from all evil. May the Lord keep your life. May the Lord keep your going out and your coming in. At this time, now and forevermore. So do not worry. Just commit 
your way to God. Amen.